My short talk is about blockchain and its role in network automation. And, uh, you know, th this is a, uh, you know, as you know, this is a new, um, uh, it, well, it, this is a platform that's been used for cryptocurrencies mainly. But its, but its application, blockchain application, goes across the board in many, many industries, including uh, telecom. And so let's just, uh, let's just go quickly. I don't want to turn this into a blockchain tutorial because there's a, a loads of uh, good, uh, good literature on that. But I'll give you a little quick highlight, basically. So what is it, problems it solves, and applications to telecom, specifically for uh, automation? Um, so what it, when you talk about, uh, if you look at a, a network operation or internal operation or processes and look at them as in terms of transactions, the most important thing in a transaction between two entities is that they have to have trust. And because if you think about a transaction that you make through an eBay, for example, you buy something from someone else from eBay, you don't know the other side. And so there's an intermediary that basically both people trust, and you can do the transaction and exchange the goods and the money. In this case, uh, blockchain brings this a trustless, what we call a trustless transaction between two entities. So you don't need that intermediary anymore. So just think about uh, a world without Wall Street brokers, uh, no PayPal. Uh, you know, Visa, MasterCard, they'll all have to change, eventually change their models. Even banks, they're changing their models because these are all intermediaries, okay? So what, what it is, blockchain is a um, distributed database, ledger-based, and uh, the information is uh, chopped up into 256 bytes, and, ev and uh, they're put in blocks that are, uh, if, you, if some of you are... Uh, Remember your software software from school, the doubly linked lists, you know. Uh, so there, all the information is encrypted, and uh, multiple copies are distributed throughout the network. So everyone has a copy. Everyone uh, uh, can access and see the transaction very easily, and, and uh, it is immutable. You cannot change it. If you try to change a block, you have to have another block that tells you that it tells everyone that you change the, the other block. And uh, every user, uh, you, you can have point to point or a multi point blockchain operation where everyone uh, has access to the transaction and it's very, uh, uh, very clear and transparent. But you need a key to, uh, to decrypt the encrypted information. And, and this, as I said, this results in a trust, trustless transaction. In other words, you don't need an intermediary. Uh, the two sides, you don't need to, to have trust between, uh, you two, between the two sides because blockchain gives you that, okay? So very quickly, let me make sure. Uh, yep, yeah, very, very quickly. Oh, just, just a quick thing about this uh, uh, also. So uh, when you, when a transaction is, uh, updated or a, uh, a new block is include, uh, wants to be included in the chain, uh, there are people called miners or data centers that try to, uh, you know, tr try to put this block into the chain. And, and uh, it is it's a rather difficult task to do. So these miners, uh, a lot of miners try to do the same thing, and whoever gets it first, they get rewarded with uh, coins. And they can uh, map. They can uh, um, get get those coins and translate it into dollars or yens or euros or whatever. And it's it's a little difficult to insert that block into the chain, but it's very easy to verify it. And if, as I said, if there's a bit that change it, it changed in any of these blocks, everyone will know that th something went wrong with that, and they know that the trans that particular block is not right. Uh, okay, so uh, very quickly, some of the uh, um, uh, some of the applications in in telecom. You can do three things telecom, in telecom. You can do uh, you can use blockchain for internal processes, and that's actually 
something that goes across the board for all segments, all industries, not just telecom. You can make, you know, you, can, you have different departments that they communicate with each other. You can create a blockchain among all of them, and everyone can see what's going on in a transparent way. Uh, the other thing that you can do in telecom is, is create uh, revenues. For example, you can, you can uh, do uh, a, a telecom operator can establish a, um, a system where you can do micropayments between two different, uh, you know, two different people without going through, or two different entities or two different nodes without going through uh, uh, PayPal or MasterCard or whatever. And then they can also use, so the third thing is the, for network automation. And that's what we are gonna talk a little bit about that. And you know, all of these uh, are part of that. So one of the, uh, as in IoT, uh, blockchain is gonna be in uh, uh, IoT, um, impact on, on IoT with eSIMs, where if you, know, if you think about an IoT uh, node or endpoint, uh, every time a new uh, IoT endpoint comes into this ecosystem, it has to be verified to make sure it's not tampered with. And with blockchain, you can do that data integrity. And this is the sweet spot, basically, uh, in, in uh, blockchain for uh, network automation. And um, you can also, uh, for lawful intercept, for example, if you use blockchain, if you you know, use blockchain and lawful intercept, you're going to make sure that the call detailed record, call data records are not, uh, are not fraudulent and, they're, and uh, you know, they're, there's integrity that goes with them. And also, you can establish uh, a relationship, again, trustless between your vendors and yourself and your partners where everything that happens between the two sides is clear. And they, as long as you have the key to decrypt the, the, the encrypted blocks, you can see what's going on in all the transactions. Um, so let's, let me go to the next one here. So it's some of the things you can do with blockchain for network operation, manage network appliances from different vendors. So you know, you have a, as, an, as a telecom, you buy from different vendors and you have to manage all of these. And with, with blockchain, you can enforce policy, you can keep a secure record of every device and their current state and their configuration history. And also, you can also create uh, a blockchain between, uh, as I said, between the telecom uh, company and the vendors, the payments. Um, let's say you, um, you're using NFVs and you're, you're getting these NFVs based on a royalty basis. Licensing, right? So they, you can actually use blockchain to record the utilization of that NFV for whatever amount of time or whatever, uh, whatever number of CPUs you may be licensing it for, and you can, you can do that and everything, the billing is very clear. You know exactly what you have to pay, and the vendors will know how much, uh, how many CPUs, for example, this VNF is uh, running on. Um, roaming fraud, uh, this is really important. That's a $130 billion problem for, um, uh, for uh, uh, telecom companies. And the, the last thing is, uh, not the last thing, some of this, there are other, uh, sub, a, a blockchain-defined WAN, which is basically a blockchain that's been, uh, a, an SD-WAN that's been fortified by, or enhanced by blockchain. And uh, in here, blockchain gives a scalable, secure, scalable WAN transport, and it fills some of the gaps that SDN doesn't have right now. One of them is, um, one of them is, uh, let me, geez, why did I have, uh, one of them is uh, bringing the uh, public cloud and content providers data directly to the doorsteps of the, uh, of the user, the other one is uh, giving, offering inter-domain MPLS uh, quality of service and traffic engineering, basically. And uh, um, so, so, 
you can use blockchain to enhance this. And also, the, the other thing I wanted to talk about this very quickly, I'm, I'm, I'm running out, is uh, uh, a, a quick example of this. Uh, oh, oh, I guess they don't have my last two. That's OK. I was going to show you how you do roaming, uh, current roaming, and uh, the way it's done now and the way it's done by blockchain. But uh, anyway, so this is going to this is this is going to be used. Not you know, it's going to take some time, obviously, because there is, it's kind of new. There's not a lot of engineers, unfortunately, for in in this field, and uh, you know it's kind of nascent. But you will see it within the next three to five years, and there's. Tier one uh, companies, tier one uh, telecom companies that are already doing that. Uh, and uh, there are examples of them uh, that you can uh, look up.